Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. Let's go over the topic of how to be a good training partner. You know, a lot of us, you know, we've had that partner from hell, the one who hurt you or, you know, maybe not, maybe not broke something, but just maybe ran all over you, right? Just smashed you and something that you weren't prepared for. This is especially true for beginners. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner on top or a beginner on bottom. I mean, you're either going to get run on and smashed or you're going to be that guy smashing a, a weaker, smaller opponent who's maybe even less experienced than you. So how do you be a good training partner? Well, you're training, right? It, it's not all give, 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 give. It's give and take, right? Each training partner needs to get a benefit out of training with each other. Otherwise, why bother? So you want to be a good training partner. One of the ways to do that is to think to yourself, what am I strong in versus my opponent? And sometimes maybe this is some, something, uh, something you haven't trained with this partner before, so you try for the first time and you end up beating this partner and you beat him with something you're very good at. So okay, you know, put that in the back pocket. I don't need to do that anymore because the, this particular partner doesn't necessarily know how to defend it that well. Let me try something else. Let me try my next best position, submission, whatever you want to call it. And are you able to execute it? Finally, it'll get down to a point where, yeah, my worst one, that, that particular person is just all over me when I do that. For instance, let's say I'm playing guard and, and my guard isn't just, is, just isn't that good. And this person can pass my guard all the time. But when I'm on top, I'm always beating this person. So that would tell me to be a good training partner. Um, I can do one of two things. I can play my guard, which helps me, and let this person just keep passing me to get more reps on passing guard, let them work on their top game while I work on my bottom game, right? So that way it would, it would benefit me, and if the partner likes that, then it benefits them. On the other hand, the partner may go, hey, um, Ryan, you know, you're really good at your Kimura from cross side, and you keep getting me with that. Can you work on it with me? So I'll say, I'll think about it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, not a problem, right? You know, then in this case, I'm going to be giving to that person and I'll go over it a few times. I'll give them some pointers on what I'm looking for, what they're giving me and why I'm always able to get it and then get them to work on it and get better at it. And then I'll say, hey, you know what? Um, you were really just blowing through my guard. Would you mind trying to pass my guard now so that I can try to figure out, um, you know, how to deal with um, playing guard, right? So that way it's a give and take. If there's not a mutual benefit, then that training relationship isn't gonna last very long, right? If, if one person is always getting the benefit and one person is not getting anything out of it, then you have, what happens, you have two things. Number one is you might have a person who just doesn't wanna train with you anymore because all you do is take, take, take. <clears throat> the other option is that all I do is I give and, and I help to make this person better, which is good, but then I never get better. So am I doing this training partner any good by not getting better myself? The answer is no, because I'm not gonna be able to push this training partner. You know, a lot of it is, um, some guys are such good training partners that they never get any good. Now, how many times have you seen this to where, you know, you're training with a guy who's a level or two or three above you, and you're always able to beat him, right? He just doesn't have anything on you. So what does he do? He says, hey, Ryan, 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 let me, let, me, let me show you something really, you know, and I'm about to take his arm, right? And he says, oh, Ryan, you know, if you did it this way, you'd take my arm even faster. Like, in my mind, I'm going, I had your arm, right? But that's where, you know, that's where you have what's called the instructor tap, right? There is this one guy, and this is back when I was a brown belt, and I was still really, um, really aggressive in my training. I was really trying to climb that ladder as far as my training ability. And Dave had this one old, older student, not older, he's the same, he, same age, actually he's younger than me, but older in that he was a student of Dave's prior, left Dave's school to go to another school, got his black belt, and I was a brown belt at the time, and he and I were same size, and he came into the studio, and he wasn't really confident in his black belt. I could tell that right away. But anyway, we did our drilling in class, and what all he wanted to do was teach people, teach people. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. And Dave was running the class, not him. He was a visitor. And it annoyed me that he did that because, and I, and I 
I see what he's doing. And, and on the one hand, he's, he's and to me, it's, he's showing Dave some disrespect because Dave's teaching his class is Dave's school. Why are you in here teaching? And you're not even teaching what Dave's teaching. Um, so when I went to train with him, you know, I, I'm still, I, have, I still have that Hawaii mentality, right, that we had, you know, um, and that, uh, you know, the old school mentality, you got to set them straight, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so what happened was when we lined up and we started training, right, you know, rolling, then I started training with this guy and I remember I, he, he, he put me on my back, so I was playing guard and I remember setting the choke up and I had my second hand in here and he goes, bro, 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 check this out, let me show you something. And I'm going like, what? So he goes, oh, you know, if you, if you put my hand on this side, my, my arm on this side, then you can lock up the head and arm. In my mind, it was like, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to choke you out with a plain, straight, old school cross collar choke, right? So, so that's what happened. So he's, he stopped it right when I was about to get him, right? Because he wanted to teach me, right? So to me, I didn't want to learn from him. Dave's my instructor. But that made him a shitty training partner, right? But maybe I was one because I was going after him and he didn't want me to go after him. I don't know, right? But after that and we stopped, then that was like a minute into a five minute round and he literally just sat right in front of me and just started talking to me after that. He would not train, which kind of annoyed me, right? Because I was there to train. I was there to work out and I was there to get better and I was there to learn and work on what Dave had shown that day. Well, that made him a shitty training partner. So he came in to the academy once, maybe a week or two later, you know, visiting again. And this time I thought, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop when he wants to talk to me. If he taps, that's another thing, right? So what happened was we went, we we're training, and I just remember he was, I was playing guard again, and I sunk that choke in, and he tried to say something, but it, and it wasn't the word tap. I just started to squeeze on his neck, and he went ballistic as in like oh shit right and you know started to try to defend himself and you know and i didn't stop and i didn't stop at all for the entire round right and um you know but in my mind he was a, a crappy training partner so i just kept training and you know i was pushing him because as far as i saw he wasn't that good Right? And when I talked to Dave about it, Dave's like, eh, you know. So, you know, because he was not a good training partner to me in the beginning, by letting me have what I had earned, right, it annoyed me. And it made me not want to train with the guy again. You know, it just made me want to go after him. Um, you know, thankfully, for better or for worse, he, he never came back to the studio. You know, he see, he, he'd seen Dave a lot at the time, but... You know, he didn't come back and train, which is probably good because, you know, I was, you know, you know, he had a target on himself, which, you know, I'm not proud of, you know, that I let that get to me. But, you know, but I'm trying to be a good training partner and his trying to be a good training partner was not the same. So we had two different views of what a good training partner is. Um, but at the end of the day, a good training partner gives and takes right for you to your partner. And if you're giving, 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 don't be afraid to take. And another thing is, if you're a higher rank guy and the guy is better than you and, you're, and, and the guy is lower ranked than you, just suck it up. It's no big deal, right? You lose, you lose, right? But don't instructor tap. That makes for a crappy partner. And, and you know, uh, oh yeah, you know, let me, let me show you this, right? Right as about you're ready to, to tap, you know, or, you know, let's say you're ready to tap and you're not gonna instructor tap, but instead, you go, oh, my body hurts or whatever. You don't just, you know, you, you call it other than a tap. So anyway, I hope that kind of helped you in um, making yourself a better training partner and also looking for better training, part training partners for yourself. Come visit us, Kama Jiu Jitsu Irvine, Kama Jiu Jitsu Flower Mound, Texas, or Kama Jiu Jitsu Austin, Texas, or come see us at KamaJujitsuOnline.com. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Like and subscribe or share. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.